Hi, thank you for joining us. I'm Nancy McCraney, the Director of Volunteer and Bereavement Services for Hospice Austin. And I'm here with my colleague, Maggie Cochran, Bereavement Supervisor. We're gonna have a conversation over these next few minutes about surviving the holidays, especially during a time of loss. And we're going to share with you a few things that we've learned both from our own experiences with loss and from things other people have shared with us or taught us through the years. So we're glad you're here. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one we know you wanna skip the holidays. You wanna sleep from before Halloween and, and through New Year's or even through Valentine's Day. And so obviously since that's not possible, we want you to feel a little more comfortable in facing it sort of squared towards it and, and face the holidays and, and, and do what you can. It's good to recognize that it's normal to have a hard time during the holiday season, you're, you're grieving. And so to expect yourself to not have a hard time can perhaps set you up to not recognize that it's really normal and there's nothing wrong with you that you're not looking forward to the holidays. Um, or wanting them to come and celebrate. And I think it's important too, Maggie, to acknowledge that even when things are going well, the holidays can be a tricky time for us. They can be hard, they can be stressful. Uh, sometimes, especially if, if you're the person in charge of making the holidays wonderful for other people, it can feel like, it can feel overwhelming to get all that done. But when you're grieving, mm -hmm. it's just that added layer of, of stress and overwhelm and grief mm -hmm. that can make it hard to, to really want to enter into the season or to be able to enter into it with any energy, uh, much less uh, joy or mm -hmm. um, excitement. And so that's, like you just said, like all within the realm of what's normal. Mm -hmm. uh, at a time of loss. Yeah. So I think it's also important to, to bring in some realism to even our memories of past holidays. I think we often can romanticize those, especially you know, the holidays when we were children. And maybe we, we want to recreate that for our own family. And to keep in mind that, especially if we weren't you know, as children, we're rarely responsible for, you know, being Santa Claus for the whole family, that, that there is some romance involved in that. And once you're on the other side of that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not as romantic and that maybe there were, even then, there may have been holidays that were, you know, not as joyful as others. And so to just bring in a little dose of, of reality mm -hmm. as you're thinking about this this holiday season that we're in now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's there, they can be complicated family dynamics, even in good years or financial expectations for travel or gifts. And, and so yeah, it, the holidays are pretty stressful and yeah, create beautiful memories sometimes. Um, but yeah, looking back, it's like, there may have been more underneath than than we were than we recall. Yeah, we kind of remember the shiny parts and that's, yeah. that's good. That's wonderful. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then also holidays often highlight what's missing, mm. especially in times of deep grief. And so that's to be expected. You will notice, you know, when, you know, when you hear other friends maybe talking about their holiday plans, a feeling of, of loss and emptiness perhaps, or of yearning for Thank something you. that was that is not, is not now. Yeah, yeah, those traditions won't be the same without your loved one there. So one maybe helpful thing is to think about how the anticipation of these days are often worse than the actual day. Um, you know, you're leading up to it, you're thinking about it, you know, I think about like, when I get nervous for a dentist appointment and then you go and you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. But the anticipation, I like putting myself through, like I have to have this procedure or for those of you, um, you know, grieving when your loved one was ill, you like anticipated that doctor's appointment or those lab results. And so you, you led up with, with a lot of energy towards it. So the holidays can be the same that, that perhaps um, the pain around the holidays might not be quite as painful as you're um, sure it's gonna be 
um, and not that they won't be painful, um, but just keeping that in mind. And so you can think about what other hard days have you made it through? Um, I imagine you've had to go through birthdays and anniversaries and, um, and, and yeah, I can feel like every month brings with it its set of painful days. Um, and so, but just looking back and thinking like, oh yeah, that day was, was yes, painful, but I was able to create a ritual or create something around that day to where I also felt connected to my loved one, or I, I was able to feel those good memories on those days. Yeah. Or I made it through here. I am, you know, it was terrible and I made it through. So I think right. that's all. Yeah. Good to just re remind yourself, you know, of, of things you've gone through before. And one thing we like to recommend to people is to make a plan, mm -hmm. right? So ask yourself, um, you know, because just make a plan, that's pretty huge. <laughs> like make a plan. What do you mean? Um, well, what is it that maybe you're most worried about? Is it a particular holiday? Is it a, a, a particular event? Is it a particular person? Is it a responsibility you have that just feels arduous this mm -hmm. year? Mm -hmm. um, is, you know, we had someone tell us that, you know, her daughter really wants her to meet her boyfriend's parents this year. And that's, that's going to take a lot of effort and energy that she really doesn't have right now, but she's going to do it because she loves her daughter. Yeah. And, and wants to be there for her. So, you know, at kind of, you know, breaking it down into what is it about, you know, Thanksgiving or, or, or Valentine's Day or whatever that's creating all this stress in me. And, you know, what could I, what would be the best case scenario? If everything worked out really well, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. And what might need to be in place? Mm -hmm. Or what do I need to let go of mm -hmm. that I, I really don't care about? Or I don't have the energy or time for? Mm -hmm. What do I absolutely have to do? Mm -hmm. And what can I let go of? Mm -hmm. So that's what we mean by making a plan. I heard, I heard a person say, choose three or four things mm -hmm. during the holiday season that you're you're going to do. Um, and, you know, kind of simple, like I am going to make the traditional pies or I am going to send holiday cards. And that can be helpful one for yourself to work on simplifying. And it can also be helpful if there's people that are concerned that you are not um, acknowledging the holidays and you can say, yes, I am. I'm doing these three things. <laughs> um, yeah. And also good to keep in mind is that Think about when you're thinking about, like you said, what are you um, sort of dreading or apprehensive about? Are there anything that you're looking forward to? Are you looking forward to having some people in town that aren't normally, or are you looking forward to um, having some time off of work? And so there may be pieces that, and that, and then, you know, sometimes guilt follows that, you know, that, oh, I shouldn't be looking forward to anything. Um, and it's okay. You can have both at the same time. You can have sadness and some apprehension and you can be like, you know, I really, it's going to feel good to be surrounded by my loved ones or to have that, that special um, meal or decorations that really brings me comfort. You know, something I just thought of Maggie, when I was a young mom and suddenly all the responsibilities for making Christmas is a big deal in my family, making Christmas, um, you know, special for everybody that had always been my mother's role. And suddenly it was my role, not only for my family, but also for my mother. And, you know, if my brothers were in town, I, I really felt that responsibility. And so Christmas kind of went from this magical time to this huge to-do list, this really, and that was in good years, right? So I created this little ritual for myself that I still use, and it has been invaluable in seasons of my life when I've been in deep grief mm -hmm. is I look for a moment mm -hmm. and I, that, that's just, the, that sort of touches me or opens my heart or brings me just even a glimmer of, of joy and love. And I think that was it. That was my, that was my Christmas this year, you know, and maybe it's the sound of 
of someone singing a song I really love, or maybe it's some lights and how they twinkle in the dark. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, you just kind of know it. And I try to, you know, like, you know, it when you feel it. And I try to really then be there for that moment. So that's just something I throw out there that might or might not help you. It might be, you can't do that this year at all. But, you know, if you do have a moment that happens to you, Mm -hmm. maybe that's like we said, like a good enough Mm -hmm. holiday. Maybe it's not going to be a good holiday, but good enough. Yeah. It just makes me think of like a, sometimes like a kindness from a stranger, you know, that you either receive or that you're able to give. And, and in that moment, that human connection, and it's like, oh yeah, that's, that's the holiday sort of spirit. And so I love that example of, yeah, especially with, with little ones that are needy, (laughs) picturing you as a young mom (laughs) trying to do it all. So that's a great, um, a great idea. (laughs) So yeah, let's talk a bit further about making a plan. Um, as you go into the holidays, you know, we've already talked about, there could be a lot of pressure and demands. Um, you know, you're, you're coming into the holidays, you know, not at your best because grief takes so much energy. It takes energy from you physically, um, from you mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And so it's like this program running in the background at all times. And so you're coming into the holidays depleted perhaps, And then, you know, there might be some parties where there's more alcohol available. And so just kind of being mindful of your sleep, water, healthy food, how much you're committing. We we like to say, um, maybe you do commit to going to some holiday dinners or some holiday parties, but that you're going to drive yourself. And so that if you need to leave and you might tell the host or hostess, you know, I'm going to stay as long as I can, or maybe you have an invitation to come to dinner, but that feels overwhelming to think about like arriving and hors d'oeuvres and dinner and dessert. And you may say, um, I'd love to come for, I'm not able to come for the whole thing, but could I come for dessert, you know, coffee and dessert, or could I come at the beginning? Um, And so kind of, can you modify the plans to fit your level of, energy and availability within that. Um, Another thing to be aware of all the time, but especially at the holidays is social media. If you take part in social media, you know that most of us post our our best moments and sometimes we post our hard moments. So when you're grieving and you are looking at social media and around the holidays, you're seeing, you know, like the Halloween pictures, the costumes, or people visiting each other. And that can be really, really painful. And so not to say like you cut social media out, but just be mindful. Maybe don't look at it right before you go to bed or, or be mindful if you're just grabbing your phone when you're, you're bored. Um, and so just tricks to, or tips to, to keep in mind, to be intentional about social media or, or, um, or maybe, yeah, perhaps you take a break from it during, during the holidays. Right. I just, when you were saying that, I thought it, it wouldn't maybe work for everybody, but like maybe instead of reaching for my phone, could I step outside for a minute and just look around what's right around me at the trees or the breeze or the cold air, or the warm air, whatever it is, and, and just sort of give myself a break in, in that way, which is a sort of a slower, more peaceful way often. Mm-hmm. Um, so that might be an, an alternative if that appeals to you. Yeah. I think people are maybe used to doing that with eating. You may think like, wait, am I eating because I'm bored or anxious um, or am I really hungry? And so you can kind of do that with social media as well, kind of mindful social media. (laughs) One thing about the holiday or another thing about the holidays is tears and sadness. They don't have to ruin the holiday for you. Um, They can be, it can be both. Um, You can flow in and out of your grief as, as you feel children are a really good model for grief for us because children can um, maybe be sharing that they miss their parent or their grandparent and can show emotion. And then they're ready to go outside and play with the dog or they're ready to go get ice cream. And so they flow in and out of their grief um, kind of naturally. And so as adults, we tend to lose that. And we're like, no, um, 
I cried at the dinner table, everything is ruined <laughs> is, is yeah, sometimes, or I can't cry in front of other people. And so um, just practicing being present. And like you said, that might allow you to catch those moments of joy or holiday spirit when you're just like, okay, I cried. And then I found myself laughing. So they can both be true. All of it. Yeah, that's right. I think often when our hearts are broken, mm -hmm. um, you know, the phrase broken open, sometimes it can open us up to holding more, yeah. like holding this, this grief that excavates more space in our heart for also mm -hmm. gratitude for, you know, the people that I do still have in my life mm -hmm. or for this moment that was so dear and sweet yeah. that I really want to cherish with this other person, exactly. uh, family. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think deciding for yourself, like what's important this year, just zooming in mm -hmm. or this next holiday, what's important. Um, let me look at family traditions. What has always come before, what really has to be there for it to be, for example, for it to be a real Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. you know, we have to have cranberry sauce or we have to have pumpkin pie. Um, and then making sure whatever it is, what, what's important, or I have to be with these people, mm -hmm. or I have to be by myself mm -hmm. this year. Um, and then cut yourself some slack for, you don't have to think about next year or the next year or the next, like you're not abandoning all the holiday traditions that have come <laughs> before. Yeah. And a story I love to tell about this is a friend of mine who lost her husband suddenly when they were both fairly young, late thirties. Mm -hmm. And they had two small sons. Well, you know, middle school sons. And um, she and her husband had traveled with the boys a lot. Mm -hmm. And so they were trying to think of what could they do? It was Christmas that year for them. What could they do that would be different because everything felt so like landmine after landmine, you know, opening the box of ornaments was too much. They had to put them away. So they decided they'd never all been to Las Vegas and what a kind of bizarre, funny place to go for them for Christmas. So they did, the three of them went to Las Vegas. It wasn't great, but they had some fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and when they looked back in the years to come, it was a great memory. Yeah. They laughed about it. They had no memories of their dad. She had no memories of her husband in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And they tried something new. They never did it again. They went back to some of their old traditions. <laughs> but they remember that year they spent in Vegas, you know, for Christmas. So don't be afraid to experiment a little bit. And even maybe make a mistake. It's okay. It's yep. okay. It's not forever. It's just for this, this one holiday or this one year. Yeah. yeah. That's a great story. Yeah. And, and, and definitely we recognize that within families, it can be hard to negotiate because maybe everybody's grieving and people really want to hold the traditions the same and, and some people want to not celebrate at all. So yeah, it is hard to negotiate, but as best you can to compromise about what what you need and what you're able to do for other people's needs. Um, and yeah, if you're you have little ones that you you want to give a holiday to, um, and within that, how can you create what what will work for you or um, kind of what? Okay, like I have to go to this dinner or like the example of the woman that needs to go meet the parents of her, her daughter's boyfriend, um, what can she do to sort of fill herself up more? Does she need to have lunch or a conversation with a really close friend the day before? So she, she feels her, you know, her heart is full from that time with her friend, or what does she need when she comes home? You know, like, does she need to have a day to herself where she doesn't answer the phone? Um, and, or, or if you do, or you are able to make your, your own decision fully, you may want to let the day pass quietly by and people will likely be concerned that that's your choice. And so you can say, you know, I'm letting you know in advance. And from this time to this time, I'm going to have my phone off, but I will turn it back on at this time or something like that. Um, because people, yeah, they're, they're concerned. And so, um, 
as much as you can communicate about your needs, that's helpful. Yeah, I think that's really a, a important point. And we had a woman tell us the other day that one of her new, new um, rituals mm -hmm. uh, around the holidays, around the Christmas holiday in particular, um, she lost a husband and earlier, many years ago, she lost a baby mm -hmm. and she still puts up their stockings. And each year she writes a love note oh. to each of them and tucks in their stocking for that year. And I thought that was a, a beautiful way to do something symbolic, yeah. acknowledging mm -hmm. the loss, but also bringing them into the day with you in a largely symbolic way, but a meaningful loving way too. I, yeah. I thought that was a beautiful example. Yeah, you can be creative with whatever comes to your mind about a ritual or, um, you know, decorating in a different way. You might choose choose to decorate, but you want to change it up. So yeah, whatever you feel led to is, is okay. Yeah. We had a year um, when, you know, everything had fallen apart and I am usually the host around this time of year for my extended family. And I, because of this work, I was able to say, I can't do it this year. I'm, I just can't host this year. And so we didn't, and they're still my family and they still love me. And that was just that one year, you know, it just wasn't going to be possible to, to host everybody and to be in a celebratory even giving kind of mood. So yeah. give yourself that grace and that mercy to say what you need and then allow other people to respond to that. However, they need to respond. Yes. I'm wondering, did you get some pushback and have to really, I think there was some disappointment, but I, you know, I have a really gracious family mm -hmm. and, and I think they understood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it can feel like you're letting others down. Um, and so it can be really hard to do what yeah. you did. Um, Some people aren't going to be gracious. About <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So like, like you would give that example of like asking for what you need or want, it can be really hard because you don't want to burden others. And so one thing to keep in mind when you're grieving and really life in general, and especially the holidays is one of my favorite things is just thinking about three types of people we need in our lives. And so when you're grieving, one type of person that may come to mind is the person that can just listen to your emotions. Like I'm sad, or I feel guilty, or I'm kind of angry. So somebody that's not going to try to talk you out of your feelings that can just really sit with emotions. If you're a person that needs to process your emotions. And then the next type of person is the person that's going to help you get stuff done. They may not really feel comfortable with emotions, or they may, if you try to share your emotions, they may try to make you feel better and say things like, at least you had a really long time, or at least your mother lived a good life. So they are a good person. If you're like, I feel overwhelmed. I really still want to bake these cookies, or I really need help getting my shopping done and they will move to action. And then the third type of person is also a person that's not great with emotions and may not be great with helping you accomplish tasks, but they are great at like, let's go see a movie or let's put on our pajamas and watch, you know, cheesy holiday Hallmark specials. And so they offer you a reprieve or a break or a distraction from the holidays and from your grief. And so thinking about those three types of people and how they can fit in and help support you during the holidays, a lot of people want to support you even though it can be so hard to receive that help or you feel like you've, they've already done so much for you or you're just a person that's used to doing for others. And so to receive can be very hard. It's easier to give sometimes. And as you were saying that, I thought, you know, some people are hesitant to reach out. Some people are all over, you know, what can I do? What can I do? And you don't know the answer. Um, and then some people are hesitant. And so to say, you know what, I'm going to reach out to that most organized person that I know and say, would you help me address these holiday cards? I really want to send them out this year, but I, ugh, you know, yeah. Let's yeah. see what they say. Most yeah. people do want to help. Yes, you're right. You know, people say, call me if you need something. And some people say that, and maybe you're like, ah, oh, pretty sure they won't, sh you know, show up if I ask. And then there's some people that really do mean it and they're not quite sure. We're not really, um, 
given the life skills of how to support people in grief, kind of in a, a grief avoidance society. And so people aren't sure what to say. And so as much as you can is kind of leading them through, even though, yeah, it shouldn't be that way, but that can be the reality. And that kind of makes me think of sort of having that same grace of people fumbling through the holidays. I know on our surviving the holidays panel last year, one of our volunteers, Susan, her husband had died suddenly. And I remember her sharing about, I think it was the first Christmas and she flew to another state to be with her family and nobody brought up her husband. Right. It was really painful. And then it's like, but she figured they probably didn't want to like upset her, <laughs> which of course she's already upset. Yeah. Um, and so it's hard. It's just really hard. And, um, or maybe you are comfortable bringing up your loved one and other people are uncomfortable. And so do you need to build a, a ritual by yourself or quietly, like not during a, a family time or a party of some sort? So yeah, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's, hard. Not, it's gonna be, it's not, it's gonna be kind of fumbly. <laughs> be a little awkward. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Exactly. You just allow for that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it also makes me think of like sort of that permission to maybe tell a little white lie sometimes, you know, like, I, I'm sorry, I can't, it's, it's a really busy time and, you know, grief is busy. It takes so much energy. Like I said a few minutes ago, it's a you, or, or you may choose to be honest and just say, I really, I'm taking this year off. <laughs> yeah. Who I don't have the energy. And one thing I've learned as I've gotten older is to not over explain if I either don't want to or can't do something, oh, mm -hmm. don't ask for permission. Don't over explain. Just say, oh, I'm not going to be able to. Thank you so much. What a generous invitation. Yeah. Uh, I'll be thinking about you, you know, just keep and then you know, keep your boundaries. Yeah. Oh. And then shut up <laughs> to have a glass of water that you drink or, you know, get off the phone, whatever. But um, yeah, you, you don't have to explain. Nobody can look at your calendar unless you show it to them. And <laughs> It can be that you have an event with yourself in your pajamas with the yeah. remote, you know, that's legitimate. Yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. a good point. Um, and I know you've told a story about, is it Char Chariots of Fire? Yes. The old movie, Chariots of Fire. And there's a great scene in that movie The this it's based on a true story about a man named Eric Liddell, who was a, a great runner, an Olympic runner. Um, and as he was training to be in the Olympics, um, he was also a very devout, uh, devoutly Christian. I think he was a Presbyterian. He's from Scotland. And so in the, in the movie and in real life, he was training for the Olympics. He goes to the Olympic trials to, you know, the games are in a few days or the next week. And his, his Olympic trial is scheduled for Sunday and he doesn't do any, he, he relig religiously and strictly observes the Sabbath, which for him and his tradition was on Sunday. And so he says to somebody on the Olympic British Olympic committee, I'm sorry, I, I can't run in my sort of qualifying race because it's on Sunday. And he was told, well, you have, you have to run, you know? And so this man on the, on the committee takes him before the whole British Olympic committee. And uh, Liddell just says, I'm sorry, I, it's against my, my faith and my beliefs. And I, I will not run mm -hmm. on Sunday. And, you know, the committee's sort of arguing with him that it, this is an honor. You have to do this. You have to do this. It's for your country, you know? Yeah. And while this is all going on, another runner comes in to the meeting room and says, actually, I've already qualified. Um, Eric can have my spot this coming Thursday mm -hmm. so that it won't interrupt his practice of the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And the head of the committee, this Lord, British Lord, mm -hmm. says, well, that's a matter for the committee. And another member says, sir, we are the committee. <laughs> and um, in fact, Eric did, you know, make it to the Olympics and, and became kind of famous. Um, but I think the idea is that you are the committee. We are the committee of our own lives. We get to decide, okay, this is going to be something I either need to do or I want to do. And this is something I absolutely do not want to do this year. 
for whatever reason, it's really nobody else's business necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, And so to tell yourself, I am the committee on my life. I don't have to ask permission and make sure everybody's happy with it. I I can say this is, this is what's going to happen this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a great story. And, you know, thinking about your friend going to Las Vegas, you know, she and her boys, they decided they were the committee and they could sort of break all the rules of the holiday traditions. And so even if, um, yeah, you kind of have to just find out where you can be the committee this holiday season in small ways, you know, because it may be like a really big deal or there's very complicated family dynamics, you know, but yeah, how can you be your own committee? Be your own committee and say, you know what, we're ordering pizza. Yeah. Um, That's what we're doing. Just if you need to keep it simple, keep it simple. Yeah, Yeah, that's great. Um, One, one, I think final tip is thinking about it can help to do something for someone else, whether it's a person, you know, or stranger, you know, giving can really help you heal a little bit or, or gain a little perspective, you know, in grief, you just really feel you can be down in the trenches with, with your own grief, which is fine. That's okay. That's where, where you are. And it can help to, you know, give a gift to a family or, or provide food for a holiday meal, volunteer or something like that can really help you, you know, see like other people are hurting too. Other people are struggling this holiday season or just in life in general. And so it can, it can, it can help you have a little hope or make you feel like, you have some meaning in this world. Right. Yeah. I'm going to turn that focus that needs to be inward when you're grieving, like you're not indulging yourself by tending to yourself and thinking about yourself, but it's also a nice break Mm -hmm. to every now and then turn your focus on somebody else that might be in in need. Yeah. Um, you know, serving at a food kitchen or Mm -hmm. like you said, you know, coats for kids, or there's all kinds of things going on this time of year. So that's something to keep in mind. And like, is there something that would be in honor of your loved one, something that they felt passionate about or close to their heart, you know, whether it's a donation or yeah, volunteering that you can really bring your loved one into that act of of doing something for someone else. Yeah. I love that idea. (laughs) So Basically, you are the committee. Don't forget that. And what does a good holiday or a good enough holiday look like to you? Mm-hmm. Um, what what could you do uh, in order to make that good enough holiday come about? What do you need to maybe let go of mm-hmm. or let yourself off the hook for? Mm-hmm. Um, just asking yourself those questions. Uh, I think that's a good way to to kind of Mm -hmm. get get your arms around something that may just feel overwhelming at times. Mm -hmm. And we always recommend writing, just maybe jotting, giving yourself a few minutes. I know writing can be hard. It's just asking yourself that question. What what do I need? Or what are my top three priorities this this holiday um, can really be helpful. And and, um, another tool is, we call it four things, which is not very... (laughs) Right, not very catchy, is not it? Not very catchy, but a practice you can do typically at the end of the day, and you can write these down. You can just say them to yourself. You can text a friend or a loved one, or you might share at the dinner table. And the four things are the first two are two things you're grateful for. So the practice of gratitude can really, like we were talking about, kind of help you look around and see see some some beauty in the world. And they can be really tiny little things like I brushed my teeth twice today (laughs) or, or I, you know, held my tongue at the grocery store (laughs) or in in traffic. So the two things you're grateful for. And then the next one is one thing you're proud of. And that can be hard because in grief, you can really just feel like you're failing. Like you're just failing everything. And so really think about something you're proud of. And again, it can be very small or it can be big. You know, you made an important call today that you had been avoiding or, or you, you know, really were able to, to get a lot done at work and whatever it is, just one thing you're proud of. And then the final thing is one thing you're looking forward to. And that could be hard in grief. 
And so you might be looking forward to the day being over um, mm -hmm. or in the same thing with proud, you made it through a day. And so we love this practice just in general, but if it can kind of be grounding in a, in a time like the holidays um, that are distracting or pressure or especially painful. So you might practice those four things as you, as you go through your days and, and see, share them with others too. Yeah, I love those. And I have before texted somebody that, that loves me, you know, told them ahead, I may text you, you don't have to respond, but almost always they do with their four things. And that kind of solidifies mine and gives me a little insight into oh what, how their day was or or what's going on with them so if you can if you do have a buddy yeah. or a loved one you can do that with that can be a real fun thing to do yeah yeah a comforting thing to do even if it's not fun mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and just yeah make a plan yeah keep it simple you're what the you committee afterwards yeah, yeah what do you need after the holidays what do you need before when you know you're going into a painful time. Yeah. And then just always, we encourage you to be really tender and gentle with yourself. Mm -hmm. I think if nothing else, the holidays is a time to remind us to be kind yeah. to ourselves and to be kind to everybody else. Like so often people are struggling in ways that aren't visible mm -hmm. to me and to each other and so to just maybe practice kindness as part of your holiday yeah. this year, especially to yourself. Yeah, that's great. And and we on the Hospice Austin website, hospiceaustin.org, under I think it's under grief services, there is a surviving the holidays tab. And so we have some of these things written out. Um, if you want to kind of see them in writing, or there can be some good Google searches out there that you might come up with a list and just feel free to be creative and, and use your intuition, um, and know that it's just for this year. So good luck as you yeah. navigate them and yes. yeah, you, you can, you can do this. You can survive these holidays. So, right. Yeah. I'll be thinking about you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. And thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Thanks, Maggie. Always love it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.